Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on Electronics 101, we're going to start talking about transistors. Uh, specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about the bipolar junction transistors. Uh, these are silicon-based. There will be one other kind of transistor. We'll go over the MOSFET. It's a little different than the BJT, but so I just don't want to get them confused. Um, uh, if you might have noticed, I'm using a little different whiteboard software than I'm usually using. Um, the other one crashed spectacularly, and it actually took my computer with it. So it's back up and running. Uh, so I'm using Windows Journal now, and the upshot to that is I'm going to be able to start publishing these notes. So if you want to look at them and you don't want to have to watch the entire video to get to what you want to watch, take a look at the notes. Those will be published in the description. So. Let's talk about the transistor. Uh, last time we talked, we talked about diodes, and the transistors on that same level. Uh, it, you'll see that when we start talking about it, some of its behaviors. Now, there are two kinds of transistors, or two subsets of transistors you'll talk about. There's the NPN, and the schema uh, symbol for that is looks like this: the base, the collector, the emitter. And then there's the PNP, and it the symbol's almost exactly the same. It's just the arrow points in a different direction. It's labeled exactly the same way. Okay, now a transistor, like I said, is silicon based. If you know anything about silicon, it's a metalloid. It's uh, a semi-metal. It has properties like metals in that it conducts current and it has properties like those of nonmetals where it doesn't conduct current and it's this behavior that lets us lets the transistor do what it does now normal silicon behaves the way I described and it behaves that way under very specific circumstances to get this to work uh, silicon has to be doped with certain chemicals and this is an NPN so it's actually three layers of silicon doped with different chemicals and those are N, P, and N chemicals oh, that's a terrible N N chemicals are negative chemicals, they're chemicals that have an excess of electrons where P chemicals are positive, they have an excess of holes or places where electrons can go in and fill so they're positive, negatives, extra, extra electrons and it's that behavior it's these things when they work in conjunction and you put current in certain places that they behave in certain ways. Okay. Now, NPNs. Well, let me take a step back. Transistors, when they came about in the 1950s and were put into electronics in the 1960s, were used primarily as amplifiers. They use as amplifiers because you can take a tiny bit of current, IB, current on the base, and be able to control a lot of current through IC and IE. And it's just that it's that property. You can put tiny amount of current here, huge amount of current can be controlled through this. That makes it really great. Now NPN and PNP transistors have a different have different properties when it comes to controlling current. These are current flows and these are current clamps. Now if you remember Ohm's law, voltage and current are very closely related. NPN, the more voltage you put on the base, the more current you see flow through the base. So the more current you see through the collector. In a PNP, that behavior is different. The more voltage you put on the base, the less current you see through the base, so the less current you see through the collector. That's what I mean by current clamp. More voltage, less current. More voltage, more current. So, let's talk about that a little bit more. Okay, V equals IR. It's always a good place to start. So, this is a going to try and draw that a little better. This is a PNP, not a PNP, an NPN. Good way to remember that is if we go back to the last picture, 
the arrow always points to the end layer. And here it's pointing to the end layer, the middle. So collector, base, emitter, arrow points to the end. Okay, so let's talk about that current behavior. Now that it's if we talk about just the NPN, you can think about the an NPN as a set of diodes. If I were to draw those, it would look like this. So here's C, here's B, and here's E. And what you're able to do is putting current on B, you can control current through, because putting a little bit of current here lets it flow from B to C, and if B is less, if the current flowing through B is less than the current flowing through C, it's going to be able to push right on through to E. If you don't have any current through here and current coming through B, it's going to go straight out to E, and that's sort of this behavior. You can also think about B as having its own diode. Now, diodes have a forward voltage, and most of the time I like to think of that as 0.8 volts. So, if you remember the behavior of diodes, look at voltage and current. Here's current, here's voltage. More voltage equals more current. And if we were to look at the N or the PNP, the diode map is just a little different. It's actually the exact opposite. So I guess it's a little different. The diodes point towards the base. So you can see a different behavior. So current can flow through B and E to B, but it can't flow the other way. So it's this layout. Again, you can uh, the forward voltage is, you can't talk about it in terms of forward voltage with a PNP. It's trickier. Usually it's one, sorry about that, go away. Usually you're looking at a forward voltage of 1.3 volts, but it's not a forward voltage. If we were to look at the graph for this, here's I, here's V it looks like this so more voltage means less current and that's set off at about 1.3 volts so it's a good way to think about that but it's the opposite and there's not a good mathematical way to talk about that so that's why a lot of people prefer NPNs to PNPs there are other reasons but that's the main reason I pick NPNs over PNPs so, speaking of math, let's get into some. That amplification, it's called gain. So, looking at an NPN, because we do love our NPNs, base, collector, emitter, and we label the current. gain is the ratio of one current to another current. So if you want to talk about the gain between the base and the collector, there's a specific name for that. That is, it's called a beta value. And that's the ratio of the current flowing through the collector to the current flowing through the base. This is also known as the HFE value or the VDC gain voltage. Uh, don't know why it's called those other two things. There's probably a specific reason for that, but I'm not going to be concerned. There's another thing called alpha, which uh, compares current flowing from the emitter to the collector. And this is actually calculable from beta over beta plus 1. 
Now these are rough estimates because I talk about diode behavior. Diode behavior is tricky to model, so it's tricky to calculate. So these are just rough estimates. And most of the time it works out nicely if you're dealing with voltages well above the forward voltage for NPNs or well below the forward voltage for uh, PNPs. So you can kind of ignore that weird behavior, but it still takes an effect as you'll see in this example. So what do you use a transistor for? Well, let's say you have a motor you want to control and you've got uh, an Arduino. Now, uh, leaving out all the extra stuff you'd need to be concerned with, like flyback diodes, regulations, regulators protecting it from shorting back into the device, let's just ignore that. You've got a motor. And that motor runs on 5 volts DC, and it requires 1 amp. Now your microcontroller can source 5 volts from a pin, DC, but only 500 milliamps, or 0.5 amp. So, what are you to do? Well, you also have a 5 volt DC supply. And let's assume that supply can source an unlimited current. How can we design a circuit that will source one amp to control the to turn the motor on and off that requires five volts and meets these requirements? Well, we can use an NPN transistor. B C E, which we know has an HF E value. I'm going to use HFE instead of beta because my betas look like Bs of 100, meaning that the current through the collector is, oh, let me use the proper denotation, the current through the collector is 100 times the current through the base. And how are we, uh, so, and let's throw in one more formula, V equals IR, that's a B. V equals IR because in order to turn voltage into current we need a resistor. So let's go ahead and do some math. So HFE equals IC over IB. We know the HFE value to be 100. We know the current through the collector if we were to set up a, cur a, s a circuit like this, so here's the microcontroller pin through some resistor of an unknown value R through the transistor and we hook up the motor and pass that to 5 volts and this throw it to ground so we've got to find out R so we we need R to calculate the we need the current to calculate the resistance. Okay, so current through the collector has to be enough to drive the motor, or one amp, over IB. Shift that over, 100 IB equals one. So IB equals 0 0.01 amp which is 10 milliamps or more or much less than the 0 0.5 amp the microcontroller pin can supply so we're still good we can do this so let's calculate that resistance ha knowing this current go away V equals I R so the voltage that pin can supply is 5 volts but remember it's a diode so we've got to consider the forward voltage this is where you've got to start toying around with things so we assume it to have a forward voltage of 0.8 volts equals the current 0 0.01 times the resistance R so this works out to 4.2 has to equal 0 0.01 R divide that over and what do we get 420 ohms resistor. 
and that's the resistor value you need to drive this circuit. So let's go ahead and open up a good old fashioned analog circuit simulator. We can use our friend Falstad. And let's look at an NPN transistor. I'll just delete this. Input 5 volts, which is our supply. put in a logic input of 5 volts make the circuit go crazy and put in our calculated 420 ohm resistor okay so we turn this on and would you like that we get one amp to control it so voila we've controlled one amp using 5 volts and under less than half an amp to control it. So everything works out perfectly. Okay. This is, if you watched my video on analog circuit simulators, this is a great circuit simulator. And this is also where you've got to learn to play around with some stuff because, whoop, froze there for a second. Calculating the forward voltage can be simulated in this by tweaking the voltage on this pin and the voltage through this pin and the resistor here it can all be toyed around with to work out your um, what your what your actual circuit will do so learn how to play with this it's good software to be able to play with transistors because this is where things get a little weird when it comes to their behavior so this is really it when it comes to transistors this is really basic transistor stuff when you start playing with transistors playing with transistors things get weird because the gain values change and the beta or your HFE starts to get tweaked and you gotta consider those implications which gets really mathy that's where this software comes in great because you don't have to do the math out anymore but again this is just the basics if you want to control a beefy motor I really don't suggest actually using this to control a motor uh, a beefy LED good way to do this. Uh, a relay that requires more than your pin can source. Great. If you need to amplify a signal, great way to do this. A great way to do it is with a transistor. Mind you, it can only be a DC signal. Doing it with AC is a little trickier, but it's all here. So this has been it uh, for transistors. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. If you have suggestions for future videos, please Leave them in the comments as well. Love hearing your input. Again, these notes will be posted in the comment, uh, not in the comments, in the description. But that's it. So this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.